Okay, welcome everybody to the weekly charting analysis webinar with myself, Jasper Lawler. Got the risk warning on the screen, which I hope you all see fine. Looks like you should do. Going to scroll through that and then dig a little deeper into what's going on in the markets and what could happen this week. Now, just generally as far as some of this sort of a uh, general discussion about uh, today's market, obviously we're sort of coming off the um, the attack in Paris is um, a big factor in today's market. Um, you know, it's a human tragedy, but I don't think it's uh, being viewed as a sort of potential financial tragedy here. So um, it's obviously affecting confidence on a kind of broader level, um, but really no direct financial effects that we can really speak of for the moment. Um, there is some speculation about it affecting uh, the travel and leisure sector, particularly if uh, Europe start constructing uh, a bit more, bit more of a boundary around the uh, the states. Uh, you know, that makes things. Um, a little bit harder for these uh, travel companies to attract business, and, and on the fringes, potentially some of the luxury companies like Burberry, um, a lot of their sales go to tourists. Uh, you know, if the tourism industry suffers from this, um, people are less inclined to travel at the risk of terrorism. Um, then, um, you know, it's obviously not so good for the uh, for the hotel stocks, and um, and uh, and like I mentioned, for the stocks a bit like Burberry and uh, and the likes. But overall, as you can see, you know our, our uh, industry prices have us up today. The um, the cash prices um, are put kind of flat. Uh, we're up at, we're, we're up quite decently in the FTSE, about 0.4% on the cash market, about 02 on the DAX, um, flat on the CAC. All of them coming off early losses. So it was an initial sell-off, sort of fear-based initial panic reaction to the attacks. Um, but you know the sort of realization that really, even though it's tragic for many reasons, it's probably not going to have too much of a financial impact, and so markets have come back. But on the broader scale of things, if we do have a look at some of these indices here, uh, you know, I'm in the UK. I'll start with the UK. I was hovering over the US there, but um, you know, you can see we've uh, we broke some critical support last week. So we've got a bit of a sort of rough shod channel taking place in the FTSE here. Um, depending where you draw this, if you, if you do draw this trend line through this first low, which arguably there's good reasons for doing that, that was kind of the first low put in. This was a little false break of that same, and that same support was used. You use your trend line through there. We're actually bouncing off it. Um, if you do, if you use that second low, we're bouncing before it. But some sort of support coming into the market there, and so. You know, this is the kind of general structure of the market that we are in at the moment. We're in this kind of rising channel. Yet, in the short term, the momentum is definitely, you know, the sort of, um, you know, the short term as in I'm talking over the past sort of two weeks, you know, the two week type horizon. Is, the trend is down, and uh, the critical one was just when we broke through here um, on, th on Thursday last week. That was a big down day. Before that, before that, it was kind of a bit of a nothing week. Um, and then Thursday we, we fell off quite substantially, and uh, to me now there's going to be a substantial barrier from these uh, previous lows because we're below the 200-day moving average. We're making lower lows on the, the, the on the kind of shorter time frame. So the trend, to all intents and purposes, uh, is down, but um, you know not as conclusively as if we were below these lows over here. We're not. Um, you know, with this, if I pull out to the weekly chart, for example, on this FTSE here, you can see that we put a higher high here, and we've made uh, sorry a higher low there and a higher high here. So we, we, this is this is the trend that we're talking about, the channel. And and so from that perspective, still we're kind of uh, broadly supportive, and it's only when we're making lower weekly um, lows and lower weekly highs. Then we can we have that extra level of confidence to selling into short-term downtrends as we're witnessing at the moment. We don't quite have that at the moment, so um, it's you know two scenarios really is that uh, this correction's over and we're able to pull back within the channel, or the the fact that we're below the 200-day moving average and we're in the short-term downtrend takes precedent, and we eventually see a break of this trend line. I'm in the latter camp. I think it was quite a quite a big sell-off that we saw last week. 
and um, I think we, we could push a little lower from here, but I am cognizant of the idea that we're not quite in full downtrend territory. We're still essentially in a kind of, uh, you know, if you do use the weekly chart as your kind of longer time frame, we're in a kind of longer time frame range. Now that's the FTSE, that's um, the, the, the UK 100, obviously our proxy for the FTSE. That's one of the worst looking indices actually. Um, if we flip over to uh, another part of Germany here in another part of Europe, so I look at the German DAX. Um, here, you know, the, the big levels of support and resistance have been working quite well. Um, you know, this, uh, you know, on the on the first push up, worked to some extent, push dropped a bit before it. You know, we made a second push up, got through there, found our way to the next low here. That acted as resistance. We came back down. And we've basically, you know, I've got these two arrows here just symbolizing that this sort of closing level um, to the peak here is kind of where we found some found some support. And so this the strange looking candle, obviously, we gapped lower and now we're pushing higher in the rest of the um for the rest of the day. So I think to me, when we're looking at the the Germany 30 here, this the you know these sets of lows here where we see uh, this one worked here, this one worked again in terms of the lows there. Um, this sort of zone, I think if we get a close above here today, um, I guess capped by the sort of I think on the, in the chart form I called it 10726, which is based on these lows here. Then I think we've got a good chance of pushing back into the, the 200 day moving average and the 11,000 mark. Um, but still, we are below the 200 day moving average. We have broken the lows here. So there's some different factors to consider here. This, I mean, this is what I've kept on my chart for a while is that this is a double bottom. This is a completed double bottom pattern. We've broken through the neckline, come into the 200 day moving average. Now we've bounced off the neckline again. So for those of you who are bought on that breakout, of the turn of the uh, the double bottom pattern, probably feeling a little bit relieved at the um, the the latter part of the morning's price action today, because it looks like we're confirming that double bottom neckline for a re push into the 200 day moving average, and then maybe a push back up to these highs up here. So, you know, you look at the the picture on the FTSE, you know, it's looking a little negative, um, but certainly some uncertainty in terms of the sort of longer term trend with basically range bound. Um, here in the Germany 30, similar sort of range bound overall conditions on the longer term um, with that broken support on the, the short term. Nonetheless, there's a, there's, a, there's a reversal pattern that's in play here which could suggest a push higher. So I think, um, I think the way to approach this is the chances increase that this double bottom is playing out if we get a nice finish to today. With a, with a close above this um, this zone. Below there, well, we're just going to have to wait for a close above there, I think, to, to, to tell us that we're pushing back into the 200-day for another test there. And even if we get to the 200-day, it's not to say that and the 11,000 mark, that's, that's quite substantial resistance now. It's not to say we can't fail again there and drop off. But I think probably the number of tests that we failed at there, if we get up there again, my suspicion would be that um, we, we get a break. To the to the top side, obviously. Now this is U.S. markets. This is a weekly chart. Um, oh, do the wrong thing there. So. Pointed out, uh, pointed out this 38.2% uh, last week before we got there is just because it uh, does line up, particularly when you look on a daily chart, with um, basically this 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 kind of low slash breakout zone here is what I highlighted, and you know that's pretty much where we're coming out of at the moment. Each of these Fibonacci's works quite well because this. Similar, you know, if you remember, that's kind of the, the the neckline on the double bottom in the German DAX. We pushed a lot higher there, higher than there in U.S. markets. But that's kind of the equivalent, uh, probably the same date. That support again, and it's these lows here, 
along the 50. So if we do drop down again, that's some potential support. And then these were these two peaks here, with the false break, and then the retest there fills quite nicely in line with the 61.8 of this of this rally from the 29th of September. So we're back below the 200-day moving average, you know, on the on the U.S. markets as well. Um, the, the theme in the European markets is that we dropped, we, did, we failed to get through them, and have failed to get through the 200-day and have fallen off. In the U.S. markets, we did get through it, but now we dropped below them again. Um, so, if, you know, the first test is can we hold this 38.2% um, area? You know, if we get a close above there, um, it, it's looking good. Um, I'll close back above the um, the open of this candle from Friday would be even bigger confirmation. But again, we're making lower lows now. Um, this was um, I had this previously. I mean, it's just a small area, but I'd mentioned in one of the previous chart forum posts. If we get a break through that, um, I think it was one of these. Maybe maybe it was there. I had an X there. I so said, if you know, if we drop through there. That opens up the 38.2, and that's kind of what we what we're dealing with. So it's just, you know, it's not just a little tiny bump in the road like we experienced on this rally up. It's a bigger correction. You know, we've made lower lows, but that's not to say we can't push back up again. But we've got to be aware that we can't just buy every little tiny bounce because this is a, um, you know, the, the the momentum is to the downside for now. So that's the kind of broad structure we're looking at in terms of equities. Any other slightly more uh, unusual markets, uh, equities-wise, if you want to discuss those, let me know. Um, what I was going to do here is just before we get into the commodities and FX, have a little pull up at the uh, market calendar. So today we had uh, Eurozone CPI. That's already taking place. That was the, is the final one for October, so not as important as the the flash number for November, which we um, which we should see before the uh, the well we will see before the ECB meeting in December. Um, but nonetheless, we're you know we're out of uh, you know we're. On the, on, the, on, the, on the headline number, we're out of deflation year over year, and on the core number, 1.1%. You know, it's uh, yeah, of course the target's 2%, and it's hardly runaway inflation, but it is inflation, and so it does call into question the need for um, further QE from the ECB in December, especially if the Fed is doing their job for them um, by raising interest rates and um, devaluing the, the euro against the dollar. We've got um, the UK CPI. Now, again, a lot of this UK data has lost its, uh, uh, its, its luster a little bit um, just because, again, over the weekend we had um, Andy Haldane, the chief economist of the Bank of England, um, saying that he doesn't see the – I can't forget the exact wording – but doesn't see the need for a rate rise in any time soon, something along those lines. Fairly explicit. Um, and so that, that comes off the back of a fairly dovish set of inflation forecasts from the Bank of England. And so all this, you know, the, the data from the UK, except on the inflation fund, is all pretty strong. And even inflation is not that bad when you strip out oil prices, but nonetheless, it's just very dovish from the Bank of England. So we met, even if we get a bit of a pop in the pound, which we can um, put up the general picture here, it's still um, it's still fairly weak. I'll get I'll dig into the pound in a bit more detail in a minute. We've got German ZEW uh, tomorrow. That'll probably be um, of significance for the euro. We've also got US CPI. That's massive. Um, you know that's uh, that's again that's tomorrow, and. You know, basically, uh, if inflation starts to move in the right direction for the Federal Reserve, bearing in mind we just had that massive jobs report in October, um, there's a really good chance that the Fed will hike in December. We had some pretty, pretty awful retail sales numbers from the U.S. last week. 
and uh, you know most of the data, particularly manufacturing, is pretty pretty rubbish from the U.S. But you know still they're creating jobs, and uh, there's a big question mark: Do we really need emergency measures for an economy that's not exactly booming, struggling on the manufacturing front, low inflation, but you know still uh, do we need you know do we need emergency measures? Probably not. Uh, probably haven't for a long time. It is about time they normalise policy, and it's just a matter of well, can inflation just at least sort of move in the right direction? It, it's hard to see. Even if the, even if all, all that said, um, it's hard to see the Fed actually raising rates if inflation is dropping. I mean, that's that's fairly unusual because at the end of the day, one of their mandates is to hit their inflation target in order to maintain price stability. So if they're not you know, if they're not doing that, if it's, you know, one thing would be if it was inflation was just holding it flat at a low level, but otherwise the economy was stable and producing jobs, that would be one thing. But if inflation is actually dropping, you know, I think they'd probably err on the side of caution and wait. So that, again, that's just the importance of this CPI number tomorrow. Mm. Got industrial production as well. That's, that's probably going to be pretty poor. You know, obviously we can, you know, you never know whether it's going to be consensus or not. Um, but it's, it's expected to be pretty weak. It's expected to improve um, over the month, whereas we saw a contraction last time. But I would say, based on the current trend of things, entirely likely that it does miss expectations. UK retail sales later in the week. Um, we do have the. I feel like um, I think we've got where, where we've got the Fed minutes should be out. Do, do, do. ECB in minutes, I mean. Uh, well, that's forward. Lost. Lost track of those somehow. But they're not in our calendar. Apologies for that. ECB minutes, nonetheless. <clears throat> and that, I would argue, is probably the bulk of what's important in the in the following week. Obviously, if you're tracking all prices, you want to watch inventories. And uh, of course, we've got some PMIs coming in the following week. So, ECB minutes are on Thursday. Did I just, maybe everyone else saw that, but I didn't. So since we've been discussing the economic calendar, let's have a look at greater context of what we're dealing with FX-wise. So Euro, in, in some respects, similar to some of the indices where the, the short-term trend unmistakably down. You know, if you're looking at more like the kind of uh, day trading time frames of an hourly chart, um, you know, definitely sloping down from left to right, you know, consolidating at the moment, uh, but more of a consolidation within a downtrend, um, a, uh, more of a continuation pattern, I would argue, than a bottom taking place at the moment. Um, but in the, in the longer scheme of things, broken a significant trend line, retest dropped, but still above the uh, the March lows. So not making, um, no, not really making weekly chart uh, lower lows. Weekly chart lower lows, not so much the the monthly chart lower lows. So it's um, 
certainly a bearish environment at the moment, but while we're, while we're above those March lows, always potential for a quite a decent strong bounce um, after a decline like we've had. And that's, that's basically the pattern that we've been seeing. You, dr you know, drop substantially, um, you know, maybe close to 1,000 pips, you get a rebound to a similar amount. Uh, that's kind of been the, the theme, bounce up here, drop. So I think probably the, um, the, the point to look at here is, is these, uh, these lows for May and July, where we've kind of done, we've had that small consolidation week in the euro. You know, that's the kind of level to watch for here. Um, if we push back above there, then I think we're, you know, we're basically heading back into the kind of uh, consolidation, and I think we could get a good old rebound, and, and maybe even that rising trend line wouldn't stop it. It could be um, 110 and above, perhaps. So basically, we need we need this we need this to to hold as resistance, and then we can continue the track lower. Now the pound, we're trying to make this, uh, the break of this trend line work into a new downtrend, but it's really not happening at the moment. We've just basically turned into a kind of tighter range. And yes, we broke the bottom of the range here. And, and certainly um, as we retest that low from, uh, from the 29th of October, you know, this is the potential area for the whole thing to roll down into a more accelerating downtrend. And as I mentioned, I mean, the Bank of England have got very dovish. Um, there's a good chance that uh, the, pan the pound can continue to decline. Obviously, the big factor is um, is really the Fed. I mean, the, pound, the, the Bank of England don't look like they're moving anytime soon. That's pretty dovish for the pound. But will the Fed raise rates? Um, the expectation is they will. You know, if they don't, then we can expect uh, the pound to push back into the top half of the range. Um, you know, if they if it really looks like they will, um, then uh, then you know, I think that's when we break out of this range and retest these um, these lows down in the uh, down in the 146 vicinity. I mean, this if you look at how many times this kind of this zone has been tested, one one one, one the fifth. You know, really solid weekly close below there, and there's not really much stopping us getting down to 146 again. Obviously, Japan has just tipped into a um, recession again. Um, so quantitative easing not working out so well in Japan. Pretty low levels of inflation as well. So failing on most fronts, the, um, the, the, the QE, the only success uh, for what it's worth is that the, the yen is continuing to weaken. And so in the aftermath of those strong uh, Fed minutes the other week, we got that breakout of this range. And so we're just coming back and retesting that. Now I'm basing it off these peaks over here. Basically got down close. And if today finishes as it is, that's a bit of kind of rising three methods type candlestick pattern. I mean, there's more than three days in the middle of there. But, you know, strong move higher, a few days of kind of weak downtrend, and then another strong surge. Uh, that's, a, that's a bullish pattern. Uh, if, you know, basically that, that candle plus these little ones plus that if we close as we are today. And so then I suspect we are going to push back through this, this trend line and kind of make it um, insignificant, you know, but that would be back to the top of the range again. And, the, and again, obviously, short-term sentiment is one thing, but longer term, fundamentally, uh, the Bank of Japan, if anything, would probably increase their quantitative easing program because, it, you know, what they're doing so far is not really working and the Fed again looking to raise rates.
So the combination, just to summarize there, I think the combination of this, this, this uh, potential bullish pattern as we close as today, the breakout of this range that we were in for such a long time, would be a, it would be a decent setup to, um, to push us back into the uh, resistance area into 125. On the commodities front, gold, one of the bigger movers today. Obviously, uh, you know, silver is high beta. It tends to move um, <clears throat> more than gold does. But uh, you can see technically what's going on in gold. It's quite clear cut. We've rebounded almost to the tick off the, the five-year lows that took place in July and um, had a nice hammer pattern on Thursday. Big push lower, finished the day, not quite higher, but basically flat. Drop the next day, but then a nice gap higher today um, as people flood to safety, given the Paris attacks. Now, we're, cut, we're off the highs of the day. Uh, no mistake as to why we're off those highs. It is running into that um, potential support turned resistance from, I would say, firstly a September 11th low, but then the, the October 2nd low as well. That, that's kind of zone that I suspect we could push into. Uh, but struggle to get through. Sentiment very bearish on gold. Um, you, know, you can tell that from um, COT, the, the COT report, but you can also just see that just purely in terms of the fact that we had, I think it was um, barring one, I think it was nine days on the trot, one, two, three, four, five, six. Not, yeah, nine days on the trot of quite steep declines, um, all kicking off from, I believe that was the, that must have been the Fed, Fed minutes. <laughs> or was it non-farms? It kind of been non-farms. That was that was. I think that was that next. That was that was uh, that was here when we really set off into motion. But um, we basically broke above this rising channel in gold, and we're getting a little bounce off the multi-year lows. Pretty, uh, you know, we we have had a sort of um, positive, uh, sorry, a, a bullish a bullish divergence here on the RSI from oversold conditions. So some evidence to suggest that we could get a bit of a pop, and I wouldn't be surprised to see us get back towards the 120 vicinity before we start seeing some selling again as we approach that rising channel. Maybe not even getting there before we roll over and uh, potentially push down past 170, and, and that's, that's if we pull out to a longer term chart, that, that support's held um, obviously since July, um, and it's just this continuing declining kind of channel that we've got going on in gold. Silver, very similar picture typically. We actually came off almost to the tick of this, um, December 1st low, we saw an interesting reversal on the day where we first rallied off it, literally in the space of about five minutes, we went from being down about 2% to sort of being up 1%, I think. Um, that was quite a mad day on Thursday, and we've down, similar to gold down on the next day, but then seeing a big push higher today. So again, from pretty steep oversold conditions, um, you know, it's, uh, you know, I highlighted this this large range in last week's webinar. Obviously, it's a big range, but you know, there was there was always going to be some sort of reaction, I think, with inside this area. And I think probably, as uh, you know, as this momentum comes undone, we could get a sudden pop up towards 15 before people start trying to sell into the downtrend again. And that could coincide with the, the 40 level on the RSI, which um, has a slightly more obvious support through these two lows here. A push up into the 40, maybe takes as high as 15 and then roll over again, given, the, given that we're below the 200 day moving average. So that is about it. Um, thank you very much for attending today. Hope that was useful. Um, 
obviously uh, keep an eye out for t uh, tomorrow's CPI data from the U.S. is, is really the big one. Got that um, ECB meeting minutes, which I struggled to find in our calendar, but then we've also got the, uh, some, some UK data as well, if you're trading the pound, but obviously just view it through the lens of a very dovish Bank of England. All right, thanks everyone. Good luck trading this week. Jasper Lawler signing out.